Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be having a look at what very well could be the strangest locomotive I have ever seen, a 1980s Bachman Centennial. Now, uh, I was sent this locomotive as a gift from uh, David Z to G Scale uh, about a couple weeks ago, and uh, I've done some research on it, and I've concluded that this is one of the strangest locomotives out there uh, for a couple reasons. First of all, this is a large locomotive, which I believe has a pancake motor, which means uh, it's basically the same kind of motor you'd find in, like, F units of the same era, so not a very big motor. Uh, I think it is only six-wheel drive, so sort of an unusual drive system for a locomotive like this. Uh, but the thing that makes this the strangest is that it has a pack for, I believe, double or triple A batteries, and it has a built-in horn and some lighting features. So, yeah, I'm really interested to see what exactly is going on with this locomotive, because, uh, yeah, it definitely is really interesting. I've never seen anything quite like this. So we're going to take this thing out of the box, and I'm going to show you all the details, and we'll play around with it and try to figure out what is going on. Anyway, um, I'll start with the box. The box is um, pretty basic. This is a very typical, uh, you know, 1980s uh, Bachman box. Yeah, I like how they used to put the locomotives on the box. I actually wish they uh, still did that. But uh, yeah, there's nothing uh, incredibly special about the box. Uh, the locomotive, however, though, I think is going to be uh, quite interesting. So we're going to take this thing out of the box. And there is the locomotive, so we'll put that off to the side, because I believe we have some instructions and uh, other pieces to uh, look at here. So let's put that there. Now, uh, you know, face, face it up a bit. Here is, I believe, the uh, diagram. We have a look right here. So you can see, this is really quite uh, quite unusual. We've got uh, a board up here. So they did include that in other locomotives, but it's got some sort of lighting system. Uh, but this is the thing I find really odd, a battery pack. I've never seen that in any HO scale locomotive I've ever looked at. And you can see right here, that's for the rear truck. So it's a six wheel drive locomotive. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about the uh, exploded diagram there. Here, I don't know what this is, it might be the warranty. This is more stuff for the sound, so we'll have to look over that in detail. And, uh, oh. Yes, this is the other thing I've seen. So I believe this is the button for the horn. This thing has a built-in horn powered off the uh, battery pack. So I have no clue how that works, but I am interested to find out. So here's the locomotive. I actually have a more modern version of this exact locomotive. It's also a Bachman, so I want to compare them at one point because I'm interested to see what exactly they've changed. Uh, but overall, the dimensions of it pretty much seem the same. But this is the thing that I'm really kind of curious about. I've this is this is really strange. Yeah, there it is, a battery pack. Very odd for an HO scale locomotive, because usually they just draw their power from the track, so it's kind of funny that they decided to go that route. So, uh, yeah, why don't we take this thing over to the track? We'll try uh, playing around with it, and uh, we'll see if we can uh, get that horn working. I have no clue how this wires up. I mean, we've got some prongs and some things that would probably attach to a controller, DC controller. So, yeah, we'll just have to figure out how all that works. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to do before I get around to doing anything else is to compare this 1980s Bachman locomotive with my current 2000s Bachman locomotive. So these both came out of completely different decades, and Bachman uh, has definitely evolved quite a bit since then, so uh, we're going to just kind of do a side-by-side uh, -side comparison, and I'll sort of just point out details that I noticed that are different. Uh, so on the 1980s one, you can see they just made uh, the front of it, the nose, uh, the same color as the rest of the roof. On this one, they repainted it. Uh, on the sides, the handrails are all the same color. On this one, they uh, painted parts of them white. This is maybe not the most uh, fair comparison because uh, this is actually missing parts, but when this had a handrail, it was painted white up to here, I believe. Uh, and the middle was still gray, so that's a difference. Another thing I will point out too is uh, you can see the ladders are just part of the uh, shell, 
And in this case, they are actually part of the locomotive, so that's different. Uh, on the sides, if we just kind of tilt them over like this, you will see that the writing has uh, definitely improved. The quality is uh, quite a bit better now. Uh, this is one thing that the older one is actually better for, since it has the older drive system. Uh, it uh, the door is right; it goes right through. Here, you've actually got a flywheel, so that's not so realistic. The drive system on this one is obviously uh, way better because it's all-wheel drive. Uh, but from a realism standpoint, uh, that is actually more realistic. Uh, on the top, there isn't a whole lot of difference. Um, unfortunately, again, uh, I broke the horns off this when I was a kid. But uh, the horns were definitely better on this one than they were on this one. And there is a little bit, like you can see, they detailed this uh, to actually make it look like, uh, you know, a little bit weathered. Uh, they also colored uh, the exhaust ports with a little bit of paint. Uh, the front pretty much looks the same. You can see they're both kind of different shades of gray, too. And for the back, I believe they're almost identical. So they're a little bit more pronounced, but these are actually part of the shell, so they didn't put actual handrails on that part. Obviously, this did have handrails on the back. They just broke off at one point. You can see here they're colored, here they're not. So the details were just a little bit more, uh, a little bit more crisp on the 2000s model, but that's to be expected. And for the 1980s, this was actually pretty, pretty good uh, as far as some things go, like for lighting technology. So yeah, sort of cool. Uh, I find it's funny though, things like the um, wipers are actually more pronounced on this one. And, uh, you know, the red is definitely a lot more pronounced there as well. They're not the same number, too, which is funny. Usually the modern makes are the exact same number as their older counterparts, but they changed it 6915 for this one and uh, 6922 for the other. Just one more comparison, I would say. They left the gap. That's one thing that's continued on. So, uh, yeah, now you know what uh, Bachman's changed over the years. Now, I want to see if this thing runs. And if so, what, uh, what kind of power it has. So let's get on to that. All right, so we've got her all set up on the track. One thing I will say about this locomotive is that even though it is not uh, quite as realistic as its newer counterparts, I really do like the uh, brighter colors and uh, the detail it does have for its time. I find it has a very classic sort of feel to it, uh, 1980s sort of model railroading, and uh, I, I really like that stuff. I, I kind of can't help it. It's just, uh, I don't know, there's something really kind of fun about it. Uh, now, I, I'm not sure if this engine runs or not. We're going to have to test it. Apparently, uh, the guy uh, David bought this from said that it did run, so we'll see if that holds to be true. Uh, one unfortunate discovery I made, though, is that the wheels on the front don't seem to sit perfectly on the track. Uh, this is likely due to the plastic sleeves in the middle. Uh, they're made out of nylon, and they sometimes can crack. So unfortunately, um, it might not stay on the track, but there's only one way to find out. So we're gonna give this thing some power, see if she runs or not. I'm also curious to see if any of the lighting features uh, come on, because I'm not sure if the lights run off the battery pack or not. I haven't put any batteries in it, but we're going to find out. So let's try giving this thing some power. Well, it started, and uh, we, the top light there is blinking. That's sort of cool. It doesn't seem to like my uh, larger Centennial sometimes gets a bit caught up here as well. Let me bring it back here. See if we got. Uh... Yeah, I got a reversing light as well. So it has directional lighting. Now, unfortunately, it does not seem to have either. It doesn't have a headlight, or the headlight is burnt out, or something like that. Because I'm not seeing anything from the. Uh front there so yeah so that's sort of interesting it does run and uh, it didn't derail so i guess uh, the, f the broken uh, nylon sleeves are not too much of an issue but uh yeah 
Now I want to uh, try to get that horn working, see if uh, see what's going on there. I'm really curious what it sounds like and how exactly it works, because I've never seen anything quite like it before. So we're now going to try putting some batteries in this thing to see if we can get the uh, horn features working. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, remove this cover right here and pull out the uh, battery pack. Now I couldn't find anywhere in the instructions what kind of batteries this takes, so I'm going to try putting a... Uh, a triple A battery in it, eh? And, uh... I don't know, it feels sort of loose. I did, uh, bring a double A battery down here, in case. Looks like a better fit, but it almost looks a bit too big. And, uh, the top of it's not fitting where it's supposed to be, so I'm just gonna guess that it takes, uh, triple A batteries. So, yeah. Let's put that back in there. Let's take our cover here. And there we go. Now let's go uh, sort out the uh, controller for this. So right here is the uh, controller, and I'm unsure as to whether or not this was actually ever used, because you can see it still has the uh, original twist wire uh, on it here, so uh, yeah, I'm really not sure if uh, if this was ever ever plugged in. So uh, here are uh, both the uh, prongs. Now, uh, one thing I did discover is this apparently needs batteries. You can see right here uh, on the instructions, you need a nine volt battery. It shows right here. You stick a flathead screwdriver uh, right in here to access that. So uh, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna put that in there. And uh, here we are on the inside. I have with me a 9 volt battery. Now, uh, as it shows, we want to put it in like that. And uh, yeah, just like that, we're all good. Take this. And uh, yeah, there we go. Now we just need to wire this all up. And uh, yeah, we should be in business. Now, uh, the instructions uh, say right here to connect the uh, spade terminals, which are uh, these ones right here, to uh, the DC output of the controller. So we're going to do that. So we've got this old uh, Tyco controller, which would also be uh, similar to the uh, era this would have come out around. Uh, this, would, this controller, I believe, would have been from around the uh, 70s or 80s. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's right, uh, right on the money as far as... Uh, Arrows go. So we just tighten that one down. And uh, there we go. Now the instructions uh, also say to operate built in diesel or horn steam whistles, you need to install this controller on a piece of Simplematic plug in wire, which would otherwise connect to a power pack terminal or track. So that is this uh, type of controller. Uh, configuration right here. Now, I never heard of it, but I recognized uh, these types of terminals. Lifelike uh, actually used the exact same kind. So I went digging through my bin, and uh, well, wouldn't you know it? You can. It's kind of hard to see, but yeah, it's the same kind. So all we need to do in theory is hook this up like so, and then we'll connect this to some more track, which I have right here. And then we can put our diesel on that track, and then we can figure out whether or not this whole uh, horn system works. I'm really curious to see. All right, so here's our configuration. We're going to put the uh, Centennial on the track here, and we'll see if we can get this whole thing to work. Uh, I'm not sure if we need to apply power. So there's... Hmm. Pushing the button, nothing is happening here. And we know power is getting to it because the locomotive is running. So I don't really know what to say. I don't know why that's not working. So unfortunately, the 9 volt battery which I put in this controller here was dead, and I don't have any other 9 volt batteries, so I figured we have to red green something up, and I think I've got a solution which might just work. 
Uh, so the first thing you're going to need for this uh, little 9 volt battery supplement is another archaic old Tyco controller like this one. Uh, one of these little uh, USB to cigarette lighter uh, converters here. You pick these up at the dollar store. They're super cheap. And uh, finally some uh, cables here. Now you might be wondering what this is for. Um, you see this needs positive and negative currents and power can only flow through this one way. So we can use this to figure out which way we need to wire up our Tyco controller to be the supplement battery. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to plug in our Tyco controller. So that Tyco controller is now plugged in. And then what we do is we take our two little jumper cables and we hook them up to the DC to track uh, part of the terminals here. I do have a voltmeter, by the way. I just uh, don't have the... Um, uh, little wires that go to it, I lost the wires, so this is basically our uh, jerry-rigged sort of system to figure this out. So what we do is we hook the red one onto the positive terminal, which is the bottom. We hook this one onto the side, and you can see how that light turns red. Now if we flip the direction, it shuts off. We turn it that way, so what we know now is this is positive and this is negative. Uh, so now you can't flip the direction, otherwise you'll screw this up but it will work. So now what we need to do is we just need to hook up the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative. And I've got this set on a pretty low setting here. You don't want to turn that up too high because this is 18 volts and this can only take 9 volts. So now if we put our engine on the track here, I'm just going to shut off the power for the track. I don't, by the way, necessarily recommend doing this. This is just... Uh, Trying to get this to work. And there we go. So that's pretty cool. There's the working horn. And uh, even when it's moving, I assume. Oh, get out there. That is really cool. You know, this was in the days before they had. DCC or DCC sounds. So the fact that they were able to kind of like figure out something to make a little horn It's really cool So that's it for the horn now. I just want to do a couple more tests one of which is uh, actually testing the pulling capacity of this locomotive because as I said before It does have a three pull uh, Pancake motor in it, so I'm not sure how much power we're gonna be getting out of that But we'll do a little test to see all right, so we've got our uh, Centennial hooked up to a train here of about 10 cars, which I believe is about uh, maybe an eighth of a mile. And we're going to see if it's capable of pulling this. These are uh, all modern stock with metal wheels. And uh, put some power in the track here. Well, apparently it can. It's uh, a little bit stuttery, I think, because of the uh, electrical system, but it does do it. So I guess it passes that test, sort of. All right, so now we know it's capable of pulling a 10-car consist, but what I'm also curious about is how fast this thing can go, because it does have a three-pull motor. Now, uh, mind you, it might have been reducted a little bit. Uh, it might have been geared down, but this thing can still probably go pretty fast. So let's find out on, uh, I think, an 18 or 21-volt controller what kind of speed we can get out of this locomotive. Oh, look at that! The that light, for some reason, started working. Wow. So that's full power right there. That looks so much better with the uh, headlight working. Even the cabin's lit, too. It looks really nice, actually. Now, I'd say this thing could probably use a bit of work, because it seems to uh, have some electrical pickup issues, plus those nylon sleeves are probably cracked. But overall, I think this is a really cool locomotive. I'm not uh, the biggest fan of Bachman, but I'm really impressed with it because I really like the kind of quirky and sort of unusual stuff. I find it interesting, and this is definitely that. So yeah, I really do like this locomotive. Anyway, before I finish off the video, I wanted to give a special thanks to David Z to G Skill for sending it to me. I really enjoyed uh, playing around with it. And I uh, can't wait. I'm sure it's going to be a popular item during live streams as well. I think people want to see this one as well as the other one uh, operating. Anyway, with that, I'm going to finish off the video. Thank you all so much for watching.